Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and today we're going to be making a crystal ball Halloween prop. Okay guys, so today's going to be a quick Halloween prop build. Now I need to create a crystal ball like what you normally see with like uh, witches and tarot card readers and, and, and all that stuff so these are a few random pieces that I've managed to find uh, that I've, I've accumulated over the years that I should uh, think work should work really well so obviously this is the base now it's got this like floral flower pattern and this ceramic tile. Now that needs to come out so I can see the uh, heat gun working well for that. This I bought in a uh, in a second hand shop which I believe is an ashtray. It's like a goth looking ashtray. It's probably made by Nemesis now maybe. But uh, that seems to fit that as a diameter really well. So once that this is taken out, this will sink in place and will be absolutely fantastic. Now getting to the main part, the actual crystal ball itself, this is a novelty uh, see-through glass bauble that you get for Christmas. Now I got this from a garden centre and it cost me £8 and it just says it's part of the Christmas decorations by Decorus, that's D E so. D-E-C-O-R-I-S So let's open this up So Yeah, that's basically the uh, The bauble so as you can see there it's supposed to just hang like that now We've got like a, a part here where the glass tapers off now. That's going to be a problem Now I don't want to go ahead and I don't want to try and cut that off because this glass does feel like it's quite on the thin side so uh, it's probably more likely to break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the centre of here and then that can then fit in place like that. So all t when all these parts are together I think it'll make a great prop. So yeah, so uh, now I've introduced you to all the key parts. First things first, I need to get this from the base. Okay guys, so for the next part, I'm going to use the heat gun to heat this up and I'm going to use a screwdriver. I've got two types, one's a small end and one's a big end. Uh, basically see which one will work best. I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to try and carefully remove it. Sorry about that. Quick disclaimer, please be careful when using a heat gun, obviously it gets extremely hot, I'm wearing one of these fixed sturdy gloves, and uh, yeah, just common sense people. So yeah, so let's crack on. Okay, so for the next part, I'm going to leave this to cool down and then uh, I'll put some glue in and then we'll attach the other, the next part. Okay guys, so for the next part, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to run some uh, sandpaper across the sides just to basically take off the top surface. For the next part I'm just going to give it all a quick once over with a regular wet wipe. Okay guys so for the next part I'm going to go in with some of this stuff which is contact adhesive 
and uh, it's really good for bonding almost anything to anything else. So I'm just gonna uh, I want to quickly add some scratch marks underneath of this, and then maybe some on this, and then add the glue, and then just sit it in place, and then clamp it. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so now that this has been allowed to glue, now it is a really good fit, diameter wise, but there is like one millimetre be, uh, between that and this, and uh, or between the two bases. And there's also the odd little bit of uh, damage where the screwdriver had to go in to prise the, uh, the old the old plate out. So I'm going to go in with some uh, green milli put and I'm going to try and fill out this seam line and get rid of these uh, inaccuracies. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so now that the uh, milli put has been left to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a quick coat of grey primer. Okay guys, so now that this has all been grey primed, I'm going to go in with another spray can and I'm going to give it a base coat of like a creamy colour. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with some watered down brown acrylic in a disposable lid and I'm just going to go around and then gently wipe off the excess. Okay guys, so as you can see there, that has brought out a lot of detail. So I'll leave these to dry and then we'll uh, we'll concentrate on the next step. Okay guys, I'm going to go in with a little bit of black from the airbrush. Okay guys, so before we go ahead and we finish off more details to the base, we need to go ahead and we need to drill a hole directly in the centre. The reason is why is we need to house this part here of the uh, Christmas bauble slash crystal ball. So that needs to fit into place and then I'll put a bit of hot glue in there and then when I push that in place that'll uh, help hold it, uh, hold it in place. So yeah, so... Uh, for the next part, we'll drill that out. Okay guys, that seems to house it rather nicely. Uh, I'm wondering actually, because the first idea was I was just going to fill this hole with hot glue and then push this in, but with this being so flimsy thin, I'm wondering will this, uh, will this just, the heat just crack it or break it. So instead of doing the hot glue idea, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a load of uh, milli put. I'm going to stick it all in there, push this into place, and then uh, hopefully we can uh, 
get this back out and then just leave the milliput to dry and then uh, we can paint it. 12 seconds later. Okay guys, new plan. I'm gonna actually go in with some uh, DAS air drying modeling clay. Okay guys, at first glance that seems to have worked pretty well. Let's make sure that it fits in okay. I'll make that area a little bit wider. Okay guys, so I think I'll go ahead and I'll leave that a couple of days to dry because air dry modeling clay tends to take a long time. It's been 84 years. So yes, yeah, so I'll just shelf this for a couple of days and then we'll uh, crack back on with it. Three days later. Okay guys, so it was at this point uh, I realised that the paint job just wasn't really working for me so I decided to start again. So I took it back out into the spray booth and uh, give it some uh, matte black spray paint and uh, give it a, a good coat. So now that that's been coated, I went ahead and I bought some uh, fake skeleton hands from a, a local uh, shop that was uh, supplying some Halloween decorations and I thought that these might make interesting uh, side features. So uh, so yeah, so same again, uh, opened the packet, took them out into the spray booth, painted them matte black, left them to dry, flipped them over did the other side and uh, now we can uh, think about adding them to the uh, to the base so just having a quick little test fit to try and get where see where everything will go and then uh, I found this piece of plastic which was just off the top of one of the uh, spray cans and I thought that would work really well to be housed directly in the center so trusty Dremel uh, drill bit to the uh, or grind bit to the to the rescue. Just uh, take me time. It's quite messy this stage, so I have to go in there with uh, the Hoover every now and again. But uh, once the diameter was uh, the right width, then uh, just regular super glue to uh, to the rescue. So now that that's uh, securely glued in place, for the next part we can go ahead and hot glue the skeleton hands in place. Please be careful when using hot glue because obviously, as the title says, it's hot. Huh? So now we've got that little bit of a safety tip out the way, we can crack on with the build. So now that those are secure and glued in place, I took it back into the spray booth and gave it a second coat of black. So for the next part I decided to go back in with more hot glue and then just fill out the seams. So for the next part we get to the interesting bit which is adding details. So I'm going to go in with this stuff which is a, a gunmetal silver or gunmetal grey if you like uh, from Vallejo and uh, it's supposed to be an airbrush paint but uh, applies really well for brush so a fixed stipple brush 
and I'm going in quite heavy with uh, with the gunmetal. Now I don't want to completely coat this because I do want the undertone black to uh, be a nice base base tone uh, color. So uh, so just uh, yeah, just a general dry brush, but a little bit thicker than normal. So once that paint was allowed to dry, I then went in with some just normal generic black acrylic and I'm just going into all the little uh, darker areas where the uh, bones meet. So it just gives a little bit more of an added depth of uh, when you look at it. And I'll also go ahead and do the same for all the little individual eye sockets on all the, the skulls. So it just goes a long way to show shadow. So at this point I'm going in with a touch up dry brush of uh, just a regular acrylic silver. So this is just to basically brighten uh, the piece up and just add more depth. And for the next part we're going to go in with some silicon and just add a, a blob right in the middle there where we made that whole groove. And then I'm going to spread it out with a uh, old lolly stick, or the end of a lolly stick. And uh, yeah, now we're going to get the bauble and we're going to push it in place. Now the reason why I went ahead with silicon and not hot glue is purely hot glue is too hot and I think it'll crack the bauble. So silicon uh, obviously doesn't heat up, so it's perfect. So now that that's glued in place, I want to go ahead and I want to add something to the top. So I found this piece of um, decorative metal and I give it a quick clean with some uh, wire wool and then decided to give it a coat of uh, general black acrylic. So I did the undersign first and then uh, give it a quick dry with the air dryer and then flipped it over, did the front face and, and uh, left that to dry. And then for the next part I went in with more gun metal from Vallejo so it all matches the same colour scheme. And then uh, once that dried I went ahead and give a dry brush of silver so everything matches. And last but not least I used a little bit more silicon and then glued it to the top and then added a little silver bead as a nice little decorative top. And I do now believe it's finished. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know this video was a little bit on the shorter side, but uh, this wasn't one of the main video builds I tend to do. This was just like um, a Halloween prop. So uh, I think it turned out really nice in the end. So please let me know in the comments below what you think of it. 
Uh, if you like it, please smash that like button. And uh, if you don't mind, please share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find the YouTube channel, which I'm always appreciative of. Thank you for any help. If you have any comments, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future builds. So once again, I'm Francis Gray and this is the Scratch Build Crystal Ball Halloween build. And uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.